In this video, we'll be looking at solving integrals using partial fractions. And these examples are going to have denominators which contain an unfactorizable quadratic. Now, of course, we can factorize all quadratics over the complex numbers, but when we're dealing with integration, we generally like to stay with the real numbers, stay within the realm of the reals. So our first example here is the integral of x squared over x plus 2 times x squared plus 2x plus 4. So our first step is to do our partial fraction decomposition. So we want to start off by writing our integrand x squared over x plus 2 into x squared plus 2x plus 4 as two separate fractions. The first fraction has a denominator of x plus 2. And since we can't factorize the next part, the other term, x squared plus 2x plus 4, that is going to be the denominator of that fraction. Okay, so what goes on top? Well, remembering back to our theorem, our theorem about partial fraction decomposition, the numerator has to have a degree which is less than the denominator. So the first numerator, well, the denominator is x plus 2, which is a degree 1. So that means the numerator has to have a degree less than 1, which is a degree 0. And a degree 0 is just a constant. For the second one, this numerator here, has to have a degree less than 2. So this has a degree which is less than 2. Now degrees less than 2 could either be a constant term or a linear term. But we can't say which one it is yet. We actually can't just say it's going to be a constant term. What we have to do is we have to make sure that we write bx plus c. We have to look at the most general case, which would be a linear function in this situation. So, moving on, our next step is to combine our two fractions. So we have a divided by, or well, a times x squared plus 2x plus 4, plus bx plus c times x plus 2. And then all of that over x plus 2 into x squared plus 2x plus 4. Okay, and what's that equal to? That's equal to x squared over x plus 2 into x squared plus 2x plus 4. So we have two fractions which are the same. Their denominators are the same, which means their numerators must be the same. So x squared equals a into x squared plus 2x plus 4 plus bx plus c into x plus 2. Okay, now at this point, we can equate coefficients and solve three simultaneous equations, okay, because we have three unknowns, so we can solve three simultaneous equations. But solving three simultaneous equations is usually time consuming. Okay, so usually when we have something like this, we can actually find one of these, or maybe two of these uh, constants by using some other method. So maybe by using substitution or the cover-up method. Okay, and that's what we're going to do here. So I can say that we can work out the coefficient of a simply by letting x equal negative 2, because that will cancel out this term. It'll make that 0, which makes this entire thing 0. So let's do that. If you let x equal negative 2, well, on the left-hand side, you get negative 2 squared times a into negative 2 squared is 4 plus 2 times negative 2, which would be minus 4, and then a plus 4. And we already said that this term goes to 0. So this might as well just write it as plus 0. So I've got, whoops, this should be a 2 here, not a 4. So I've got negative 2 squared, which is equal to 4. 4 minus 4 is 0, plus 4 is 4. So 4a four equals 4, and so therefore a is equal to 1. And so what I've done is I've actually worked out one of, my, one of my constants here. Now what we can do is we can equate coefficients of maybe x squared and, and the constant term. So the coefficient of x squared, what does that give us? Well, on the left-hand side, the coefficient of x squared is 1. And on the right-hand side, you can see that, let's get a different color out, blue maybe, the coefficient of x squared is going to come from a times x squared and then from bx times x. 
and there's no other way that I can get an x squared. So what would the coefficient be? Well, it would be a times 1, which is a, plus b times 1, which is b. But I already know what a is. I just worked that out above. It's equal to 1. And so therefore, b is equal to 0. Okay, so it just happens that in this case, even though we have a bx plus c, the b is actually equal to 0, and it's going to turn out to be a constant term. But we can't assume that from the beginning. Okay, now let's have a look at maybe the constant term, the coefficient of x to the 0, the constant term. On the left-hand side, the constant term is 0. And where do we get a constant term? Let's use orange. Well, we get a constant term by a times 4 and from c times 2. So a times 4 gives us 4a plus c times 2, which gives us 2c. We already know what a is. We worked that out earlier. That's 4 times 1 plus 2c. And then rearranging for c would give us negative 2. So now we can write our integral in the following way. It's the integral of a, which is 1, over x plus 2, plus bx plus c. Well, b was equal to 0, so it's 0 times x, which is 0. And then we have c, which is negative 2, divided by x squared plus, what was it, 4x? No, it was 2x plus 4 dx. So now our job is to integrate this, which is much easier than what we started with. The first one, that's easy to integrate. That's just the log of the denominator. How do we deal with the next one? Let's write it x squared plus 2x plus 4dx. Okay, now we've seen how to deal with these already. This is a quadratic in the denominator with a constant term on top. So we need to complete the square in the denominator. So we still have the log sitting out the front. Let's move this up a little. When we complete the square, we'll get x plus 1 squared and then plus 3. And hopefully you can see that this is going to turn out to be an inverse tan. If you can't, you can make a substitution. Let's do it here. u equals x plus 1. So du would be equal to dx. Let's actually just go ahead and do that substitution, just so we're 100% sure of what we're doing. So this is the integral of 2 over u squared plus 3 du. Okay, the log of x plus 2. Now, hopefully you can recognize that this is an inverse 10 because it's a standard integral now. So we have the 2 out the front. It's 10 inverse of u divided by the square root of 3. And then don't forget, we also have to divide by the square root of 3. So that goes out the front there. Plus c. And then we have to change everything back into x's. We might as well complete the square, or not complete the square, rationalize here. 3, 10 inverse of x plus 1 over root 3 plus c. And that is our final answer.